Hey, what's up, everyone? I hope you're all doing well, staying safe, you know, during this time with the pandemic and just everything going on in the world. I'm very happy to announce, though, that my game that I've been working on for years now is actually coming out. Uh, my game is called Baller Life, if you don't know already. It is a um, mobile basketball kind of street ball game. Realistic but unrealistic, you know, and I'm just so happy to have finally completed the game and actually have it release And I'd like to take you all on the journey of how I actually went about completing my game You know all the struggles I went through uh, the, the mess ups the failures and the successes And maybe it could help someone out who's about to create like the new Among Us or Minecraft because I realized after watching a lot of YouTube videos seeing a lot of developers that one of the hardest parts of actually creating your own game isn't like finding a good idea of a game, it's actually going about completing the game. It was a big problem for me at the start, and I want to just give some advice on how, you know, I got over that and was able to actually, you know, make the game. So yeah, some background information, if you don't know me already, I'm a senior in high school right now, about six months away from going into college. I've been working on this game, Baller Life, since about eighth grade. And I've restarted the project about three times now. Growing up in elementary school, middle school, I wasn't very active, you know. I didn't have a lot of friends. I was, I was a, just very into video games. Like I, they just drew to me. And one of the video games I was mainly drawn to was uh, Little Big Planet. I don't know if you all know what that game is, but my favorite part of that game was not like playing people's levels or the story mode or the platforming or any of that it was creating my own levels and then when the game got more intricate like in little big planet 2 and little big planet on the playstation vita the portable system uh i like to recreate games inside little big planet and i think at at that moment i knew that i wanted to like create my own games only until about seventh eighth grade in middle school did i actually learn how to program I had no clue no experience and you know I I decided one day I wanted to learn how to and the first tutorial I looked up was how to make an FPS shooter and I found a video by Quill 18 creates and he was making a multiplayer FPS game in unity 3d and little did I know, that was the game engine that I was going to be using. Something funny, I've actually never taken a computer science class other than this semester. So, for the most part, for C Sharp, I'm completely self-taught. Uh, just from, you know, YouTube tutorials, uh, the Unity documents, like the forums when people help you out with code. So, one of the first roadblocks I ran into uh, trying to make my own game was actually knowing how to code it. That was one of the most confusing parts of the whole process for me. And I didn't start actually knowing how to do that until about uh, freshman year of high school. And I, I first tried to make Baller Life in eighth grade and the farthest I got was, well, I'll, I'll just show you. That is the menu. Yeah, I didn't know how to even make a person pick up a ball. I didn't know how to animate them. It was it, it was a mess. But by the grace of God, by some miracle, stuff just started to click and I started to understand how to actually code and like what things do. So I was able to get it so you could actually pick up a basketball and shoot it. And just doing that, that was one of the most satisfying things I've ever done in my life. So, by the end of freshman year, I had a playable version of my game ready. Uh, you could actually verse someone in a 1v1. And, it, I mean, it wasn't bad for like a freshman creating a game. But, it was not great. I didn't really know how to design a UI properly so it looked like this that you're seeing on screen. I didn't really optimize the code that well and you couldn't really do much. Most of the features from like normal basketball games were gone like you couldn't even steal the ball or jump in the air to grab a rebound. The AI coding, what what can I say, it was, it was beyond rough. 
and it didn't really it just didn't it wasn't a fun game so in the summer of going into sophomore year I made a pretty big decision to uh, just delete my entire game and at that moment I didn't think I was going to ever work on a basketball game again I had pretty much lost motivation because the game wasn't fun I knew it wasn't fun and I just didn't see how I'd be able to make a game better than that and actually complete it but I thank God that uh, sophomore year during winter break I decided to open up unity and create a new project called baller life 2.0 and I think that was one of the best decisions I could have made Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, I'm going to be making a part two to this series pretty soon. And I guess the lesson for this video would just be don't give up. Like really, that's very cliche, but just don't give up. If you really want something that bad, if you want to create your own game that bad, and it's just really not working, don't give up. Just step away from it, take some time off, and then come back with a fresh mind. And trust me, it'll do wonders. You're gonna see how big of a change the game had from freshman year to sophomore year like that. And it's all because I didn't give up. Anyway, uh, if you're new here, if you're not subscribed, uh, I'd really appreciate you to subscribe, you know, like the video, comment if you want. Uh, and I'll catch you all soon. See ya.